All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. It is December the uh, 16th today. Um, we're out here in the garage. We're going to be making up a few more snares. Um, I only got maybe <coughs> half a dozen snares that are made up left. Um, so, uh, I order all my supplies from Fur Harvesters out of North Bay. Um, what is their Canadian Trans Canada Trapline Company or something? I forget what the uh, store name is, but anyway, it's from uh, through uh, FHA Fur Harvesters. Um, but anyway, so all my snares are made out of uh, 332nd 7x7. Um, aircraft cable. I used to order uh, my supplies from another place and I used to get it in a 500 foot roll um, but then I switched to uh, fur harvesters and they only sell them in 100 foot rolls which not a big deal and actually the price is the exact same um, as the other place so you just got to order the amount of rolls that you need but uh, the nice thing with fur harvesters is if you uh, ship furs to them um, a you get a 10% discount on um, your purchase plus uh, they also do free delivery on their fur truck routes so um, as long as there's a truck coming out near you or you're dropping fur off to the fur truck um, they will send it for free on the fur truck. So that's always a bonus. So yeah, I used to order, I think it was out of Manitoba or, no, I think it was Manitoba. And the shipping was ridiculous. Um, so yeah, for lots of reasons, I ended up switching to for harvesters. But So we're going to go through today and make up some more snares. Uh, these are slim locks here, so you can just order them by the dozen at for harvesters. But that's what those are: is slim lock. Um, I also ordered. I ordered uh, what did I order? Three dozen of those, and then six dozen of the double furls. That's the way I make my snares. You'll see in a minute. I don't need any single furls. Um, Right now I've got a few snares out there, I don't know, a dozen or two dozen snares with the key flock. So that's what that looks like. And then for years, I've been running these ones here, which is just an Adams lock. So it's just like a half moon with a hole in each end. I've tried the Amberg locks, not really happy with them. Uh, I've tried putting on kill springs. Yeah. Uh, so this is the first year running the Keef locks and the Slim locks. And the Slim locks seem to be doing a pretty good job. So that's why I ordered more. Um, so the snares that we're going to be making today are going to have the Slim locks on them. So, like I said, these come in 100 foot rolls. I, I like to make my snares out of 9 foot length of cable. Um, so I only get 11 snares out of one roll. I don't get the full dozen, um, which whatever, not a big deal. So, yeah, 9 feet sounds like a lot, but uh, I'll show you here at the end why I like them the way I make them I used to make them I used to make it out of just a four foot cable and that would give me what would it give me well three feet would give me like a one foot loop not quite because you got your looped ends um, 
But yeah, so I used to make them out of like four foot length of cable and then I'd have to wire them to the tree. And what I found was uh, I lost a lot of coyotes um, to them twisting the wire. And so then I decided, you know what? I'll save myself a lot of headache and a lot of lost coyotes if I just do everything out of cable. They can't break that cable. Um, that cable breaking strength is 920 pounds. So uh, coyotes definitely not gonna gonna break that cable. So uh, yeah, I'll show you at the end what I mean, um, why I need the nine feet. But uh, anyway, we'll get at her. So. I've got my Swagger mounted in the vise here. I don't have a bench mount one. Um, but uh, this works good. Just put her in the vise and away you go. So anyway, we'll get started. Got you guys set up here. So if you guys get into making your own snares, um, if you're going to make any amount of them, I would highly recommend that you guys invest in a set of actual um, aircraft cable cutters. Um, you can cut this stuff with regular side cutters, but it's a heck of a go. And if you're doing any amount of cutting, um, it becomes quite a pain uh, to keep doing so. Anyway, I just opened the whole roll right up because I'm going to make up a whole roll worth of snares. So all I do is I unwind a bunch, find the end, grab my tape, and I measure out nine feet. Now because if I do 9 feet, times 11 gives me 99 feet, and these are 100 foot rolls. So I always just go a little bit extra, a couple inches here, and I do my cut. And then I'm not going to end up with a 10 foot or a foot extra. So I just keep going keeping the one I just cut in my hand because that's going to be my pattern. So I just butt the ends up go through make a cut. I drop the one that I just cut keeping the pattern in my hand pull off a bunch more wire here So I'm not gonna make you guys watch this whole, you guys get the idea. I know some guys make uh, marks on their benches, but for me personally, I find that this is a, a quicker way of doing it. But again, it's just one of those things that you're comfortable with or whatever works good for you guys. Okay. All right, so we got all of our uh, cables cut to length. So the first step I do here is I just take my double furl, put it on. You always want to make sure that you got a little bit of a of the end of the wire coming out just so that you know you got a good bite in there and then what I do is I make my tie off end my loop end okay uh, tight enough in the vise but I always double crimp, making sure 
that the entire furl is crimped down you end up with a nice loop take your lock and slide it on making sure that it's going on the right way try and get that for you guys you can see the tab is bent up so that's the way you want to put it on okay then you take your double furl slide that on then what you do is you go back through the bottom hole Oops. go through that bottom hole slide your double furl up and then you're going to come back on itself put it in okay see how that is guys okay again making sure that you got a little bit of a tail of the cable sticking through the furl double crimp okay there you go now your snare is made turn you guys around here a little bit okay dogs eating something in the background there and there you go you can see how easy those slide okay boom I've heard a lot of different things you know if you're using the 1x19 cable uh, a lot of guys like to load their snares I've never used 1x19 but uh, you know to me like that's pretty good so a lot of times I'll find where the wind has just blown these shut you always want to have your your lock you know at 12 o'clock you know and it doesn't take much once the animal kind of bumps into that snare you know it just falls closed around his neck so I'll show you here on this post okay so this is where having nine feet of cable really comes into play so we're going to use this post here as our tree our anchor post okay so what you do is you just reach around the post grab your snare grab your loop pass the snare through the loop you're going to cinch that up tight around the tree then you're going to make your loop size however big so like i said in some of my previous videos guys we we have uh, both timber wolves here and coyotes and then the coyotes some of the coyotes we have are pushing 60 pounds so i usually tend to make my loops a lot bigger than most um, and one of the things is is it's not so much the size of the loop that matters it's the distance between the bottom of the loop and the ground that's the biggest key if you got a big loop and it's on the ground obviously those animals are going to be walking right through that snare but it doesn't matter if you've got a one foot loop or a three foot loop if that hits them right in the chest it's going to fall closed around their neck so the size of the loop really doesn't come into play as much as the distance between the bottom of the loop and the ground. So around here, I'm, I'm aiming for about 12 inches um, ground clearance from the bottom of my loop to the, to the ground. Okay, That seems to catch them pretty good right below the chin and then it closes up. 
So going back to this here, so with nine feet of cable, so there's my average loop size right there, okay? Now, that's, I don't know, probably a 14 inch diameter loop, okay? This would probably be kind of my average size of tree that I'm gonna anchor to. It's about a three inch post, okay? So you cinch that up tight, now it's kind of kind of hard to see, but even with that 14 inch loop in there, I've got about four feet here, three to four feet of distance from where I want to hang my loop to the anchor tree. So if you made this cable shorter, say six feet, well now you're only going to be able to get away from that anchor tree about a foot to two feet. Now, what's nice about having the length of cable is, you can get a good anchor post, anchor tree, and then you're able to put this snare anywhere you want. You've got such a reach by having that nine feet of cable. Some guys might say, well, you know, that's a waste of cable. You don't need that much. Well, you know what? For the amount that it costs, I think this cost, what does this cost me? Just for a nine foot snare, just the cable, it cost me, I think, 80 cents. So it's around 10 cents a foot. So you're not really wasting a whole lot of money, and yet you're gaining a lot by having a lot more reach where those cables can reach to. You know, maybe the tree is two, three feet, from your or the the trail is two or three feet from your anchor tree no problem you got the reach not only that but once this closes around a coyote's neck so you got you know four or five inches that's usually what the coyote's neck is okay now that coyote has probably close to seven feet of reach and what that does is it allows him to get whipping around and tangled up in other trees nearby. The more tangled up they can get, the more it's going to help. It's going to choke them out that much quicker. Okay, guys? So, like I said, I used to make shorter snares, but it would have to be wired right to the tree. You know, my loop would have been wired right to the side of the tree. That works great if the trail is right next to the tree, but a lot of times, 90% of the time, the trail's not. You know, it's two feet to the side or something like that. So that's where I, and then what I use is, I got a little chunk of it here. This is number 12, just black annealed wire. And that's what I use. I'll wrap this around the tree, okay? Like so, obviously a longer chunk. And then I just wrap my wire around it just to kind of give you guys an idea, and boom. Hopefully you guys can see that. There's my um, stabilizing wire, okay? And then I can take and I can mount, or I can move that wire up and down as much as I need to adjust for snow depth or whatever it is. Okay, I can slide it up the tree, but normally these chunks of wire are two, three feet long, allowing me to do a lot more adjustment. But anyway, guys, that's how I make my snares. Hopefully it kind of gives you guys an idea if you're looking to make your own snares. Um, and that's just some of the uh, things that I found have helped me in the past. Um, trial and error. Maybe 10 feet, maybe 12 feet is better for you. I don't know. Um, I definitely think that the longer the cable, the better you're off. Um, but I just find that where I'm trapping, the, the thickness of bush in that uh, nine feet is plenty enough. There might be, for every, for every ten snares, maybe there's one snare, you know, where I'm like, oh, I wish there was an extra two feet of, you know, cable here or whatever. Whether it be the trails further from the tree or, you know, maybe the tree that I'm anchoring around is... A 12 inch tree or 16 inch tree in diameter so then it you know it uses up a lot more cable 
But that happens very rarely. And usually I can make what I've got work. So I find that the nine feet does me, does me real good. So anyway, guys, hope you guys enjoyed this little video. Um, if you did, make sure you hit the thumbs up button and leave us a comment. Let us know what you think, how you guys make your snares, or if you guys got any tips for me. And make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. Till next time, guys. Ciao.